this summer, we have seen a large increase in natural disasters. There have been wildfires, notably in Canada, with a large amount of smoke making its way through the country and New York. There have been massive heat waves all over the planet, notably in France, Germany, Spain, and Poland, which has led to a large amount of heat strokes with around 100 people dying so far. If that weren't bad enough, record-breaking floods and rainfall have devastated several countries, such as Japan, South Korea, and India. Moreover, this heat has been felt in the last place you'd expect, Antarctica, with sea ice feeling a record low in the Southern Hemisphere. In total, over 5,000 heat and rainfall records have been broken in the US this summer. And in total, over 10,000 have been broken all over the world. But why is this happening? The answer is obvious. It's the one thing that's been screaming into our ears for the past few decades. Global warming. Due to global warming, this July has been the hottest month ever recorded. With July 5th and 6th being the hottest days ever recorded. With the Atlantic Ocean also hitting record heats. Here's just a few stats to put it into perspective. So, in Phoenix, Arizona, there has been 19 straight days of temperature over 43 degrees Celsius, or 110 Fahrenheit. In China, it hit 52.2 degrees, or 126 Fahrenheit. These events has led to the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, to say this, and I quote, We don't have to wait for the end of the month to know this. Short of a mini ice age over the next few days, July 2023 will shatter records across the board. Climate change is here. It is terrifying. And it is just the beginning. With his final quote being, the era of global boiling has arrived. Okay, let's all take a breather for a second because all of this is terrifying for good reason. But when I look up the reasons as to why it's happening, many news sources don't actually go into this go into detail as to why. Almost every news coverage I find just says it's breaking records and be afraid, which is very helpful, I guess. But yes, this summer is really, really hot and it'll probably be hotter next year. However, it is a much more complex issue than most people make it out to be. I like to think of this summer as an equation. There are several reasons as to why it is that hot, several components that add up to it. And of course there is global warming, that's the main component, however there are others. And the second biggest component overall has to be El Nino. But what is El Nino? Okay, so how do I explain this? I have been doing research for some time trying to find the best way to make it as simple as possible. And I think I know how to. If it's not, just Google it yourself and just be ready. So the ocean surface has a normal temperature and it can be hot or cold. There's a thing called trade winds. So trade winds are a completely different concept. I have no time to get into right now. So just know there are trade winds. Trade winds are basically just global winds that go in a specific direction. And trade winds over the, over the Pacific can go in this direction from North America to Asia. When it does so, it brings the hot water over to Asia. That's usually how it works. However, every few years, the trade winds kind of get weak. And therefore, the hot surface water doesn't really make it to Asia. It kind of just stays in the middle or near North America itself. And when the ocean reaches a level over 0 0.5 degrees than it should be, that's when most people consider it an El Nino. And this happens around every few years or so. So not that common, honestly. When this happens, coast waters become excessively hot, which causes climate change. Not climate change you're thinking, just like changes in the climate itself. However, what we're seeing right now is the weather getting more dry. And of course, when it's more dry, it just makes it feel more hot for everyone else. And there is currently an El Nino active this summer which explains why it is so hot. It's far more complex than this actually, like far more, it's like the dumbed down of the dumbed down version. If you want to know more, I'll leave some sources in the description, that way you can look it up yourself. Because it is a very um, fascinating subject and I encourage everyone to like look into it, into it yourself because the topic is far more complex and dangerous than that. Just remember this, El Nino causes the weather to be far more wet or far more dry. And when dry is combined with normal global warming, it causes what we see today. 
a really hot summer. But it is far more complex than that. Remember how I said El Nino is usually once every few years? There is evidence to show that climate change is making El Ninos far more frequent and far more stronger. Again, it is just um, some evidence. There is no clear consensus on the topic so far. But as I said, El Ninos usually pass, right? Well, this El Nino is projected to actually last until the next summer. So there is good chance next summer will be even hotter than this one. So yeah, I could just end it here and say those are the main two causes, which they are. However, as I was doing this research, I found evidence to show that there are in fact other components to why it is so hot this summer. Now, of course, they're not as prevalent as the main two, global warming and El Nino. However, they could be a reason as to why it's increasing ever slightly. First is volcanoes. Last year, an undersea volcano in the South Pacific erupted, which resulted in two main things. Number one, a large amount of heated water was projected into the ocean. And number two, the eruption let out a large amount of sulfuric dioxide into the upper atmosphere. And of course, those two events only increased the greenhouse effect ever slightly. I just realized, do people usually know what the greenhouse effect is? If you don't, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on what it is and make a, a far deeper deep dive into the whole thing. The second one, which is far less prevalent, is cooling particles. So, from what I understand, because again, I don't really get this specific part. I did a bunch of research, but it still was a bit confusing to me. Maritime shipping causes a dirty fuel to exist and that dirty fuel contains a particle which has the power to reflect sunlight. That particle can cool the planet and proceed to reduce the effects of climate change. So basically maritime shipping produces a fuel which can produce a particle that can reflect sunlight. However, in the past few years, there's been an effort to actually reduce maritime shipping due to it causing a dirty fuel and therefore a reduction in that particle which resulted in global warming increasing again. Scientists have estimated that the loss of this particle will result in five times more warming. Again, I didn't look into this one that well because I didn't really understand it. I will leave some um, notes in the description that way you guys can look it up yourself. Or maybe if you think this is fascinating, if you want to, I'll make a follow-up video particularly on the cooling particle to see what it's all about. Just let, us, let me know if you want that. As much as the title is clickbaity, it is technically right. The forecast for the next summer is estimated to be hotter than before. Mainly because we will have all the effects active this year happen the next year as well. But next year, global warming will be a bit stronger and so will El Nino as well. As we've seen, there are several different components that go into the heating of the planet. Therefore, by next year, there might be a completely different aspect we don't even know about that might, might appear and make it even worse. So yeah, 2024 summer will be something else because we'll have all the aspects we have right now, but it will be far stronger this time because El Nino will be, again, a lot stronger than it was this summer and all those different components and maybe others will also appear. So you're probably wondering what's the point of this video? Is it just to make you more anxious of the future? Well, no. Again, next summer will be hotter and there's barely anything you as an individual can do about it. However, there are things you can do to prepare for it. So first, the obvious stuff. Next summer, stay hydrated. Even if you're not thirsty, keep drinking water. Also, stay in the shade if you can, or bring an umbrella or a hat with you. However, if you do have to like work or be outside for long periods of time, consider getting a large cool bowl of water and dunking your shirt into it and doing so every few hours. That way you'll always be cool throughout the day. If you do stay home, use your fan or your air conditioner. If you don't have one, get one. I know it is pretty expensive, however, it is a pretty good investment overall. If you don't have an air conditioner and can afford one, you can always go to a free establishment that does have one, like a library or a mall. If you do own an air conditioner or a fan, I would recommend prioritizing using them to create a cool sleeping area rather than a cool common area. 
However, there are other ways to keep your house cool if you don't have a fan or air conditioner. For example, turn off excess heat such as lights, stoves or ovens. And of course, open the window at night if it's cold. But the biggest advice I want to give off to people is not just to stay vigilant of yourself, but stay vigilant of others. Because it won't just be hot for you, it'll be hot for everyone else as well. So for example, check up on, 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 your, on your neighbors or your friends to make sure if they're okay. Uh, if you do have an air conditioner but you know your friend does not, maybe invite them over so they can stay in a cool area. Due to our very broken capitalist system, there's a large amount of homelessness in the world. So if you do know someone that's homeless, perhaps um, guide them to a shelter where, where, where they can cool down during the summer. Also, look out for burn injuries. They can happen if you have long contact with concrete, for example. Moreover, look out for signs of heat exhaustion. And there are several signs. There is dizziness, thirst, heavy breathing, nausea, and weakness. Also look out for heat strokes and the signs that come with them. For example, there's confusion, dizziness, and becoming unconscious. Also, don't just look out for people, look out for animals as well. So like cats or dogs. For example, for dogs, when they have a heat stroke, you can recognize it by seeing their heavy panting, their excess drooling, and if they feel hot to the touch. There are also signs for cats. For example, dark or pale gums, that can be a sign for, of heat stroke. Also, um, look out for sweaty palms or a reduction in urine production. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I know it's kind of scary, but I do think if we work together, it can be a lot less so. So that's, I think that's the main takeaway I want people to get from this. You're only scared if you work alone. If we all work together on this, it can be a far more easy and less scary process overall. Thank you for watching. I'll probably make another video around the time of, of summer 2024, so look out for that one. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.